What's happening? This is the Tap In Podcast. We are live inside of the Tap In Studio. I got a special guest in the building, man. Um, a lot of times I interview a lot of artists and people that need to get their paperwork together, need somebody to, to consult with. So I had to bring on Bree, entertainment attorney. How you doing, miss? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, good. Thank you for tapping in with me. Thank you for letting me tap in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Bree, I want to get into, um, tell me, I know you're an entertainment lawyer, right? Uh-huh. You do contracts. Um, do you do, like, um, negotiate deals? Like, tell me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. do all, all of that. that. Okay. So I do, so I draft contracts, I review contracts, I advise on contracts, I negotiate, we do all of that. Okay. Yes. Do you work for a firm or you you uh, you got your own practice? So I work for my own firm. Okay. So the Bethany Court Law Firm, yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So how did you become an attorney? What made you even want to even delve into this world of of being a lawyer yeah so i've always wanted to be an attorney always really yeah i just didn't know what type of attorney i want to be right Mm. and then i came up here to uta ut arlington for undergrad and started working with now i'm gonna age myself when i say this but started working with red rum records do you remember them no okay so um that was back in the day right do you have you ever heard of eargasm cds a cd store okay i'm from from california okay so you're you're not you you haven't been here long (laughs) I've been in six years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that they used to, uh, I used to work with them. Okay. And that's how I met somebody who was an entertainment attorney. I didn't even know those things existed. And so for me, it was the the combination of the best of both worlds. It was the the entertainment scene plus being an attorney, and that was just that was mm. it for me. So that's how that came about. Okay. Did anybody before that point? Did anybody inspire you to like? Did you ever see any other black female attorneys at any point? Or what made you interested in that? Are you just <laughs> no. just from that point? That's a good question. And I'm and as I'm as you're asking me, I'm like racking my brain like, wait, not that I can nobody that stood out that I can remember like, oh, I wanna be like her. No, I just um I remember telling my mom, and this is young, like six, seven years old. I remember telling her first I wanted to be like the president of the United States. Mm. And then I decided I want to be a nurse. And then I was like, no, I think I'm going to be a lawyer. And then that just kind of, from there, that's what it was. I was going to be a lawyer. Really? And that was it, yeah. That's dope, man. <laughs> that's super Because I always never see black female attorneys, one. I see mm-hmm. a lot of male attorneys, mm-hmm. but not a lot of female attorneys. Yeah. Is it is it a lot of y'all? Is it a lot of uh, female attorneys? This is a white male dominated industry. Really? Yeah. So it's not a lot of us at all. Um, and then it's not a lot of black female attorneys at all. So yeah, no, we, we're like unicorns out here in these streets. Mm, okay. And on the entertainment side, right? Mm-hmm. When it comes to contracts, I always hear all these horror stories from artists about yeah. people messing them over. How do you get messed over on a contract? Uh, Because you see, so so what I run into is that artists, number one, um, are not taking the business side of the of the game seriously. Right. Mm -hmm. They just want to create and perform and that's it. And that's dope. Right. That's that's essentially why you became an an artist. Mm -hmm. But on the back end, there's that business side that you have to show just as much attention to. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting messed over because there's things in the contract that is not in their best interest. There's things in the contract that they didn't either. They they looked over. They didn't understand it or they didn't negotiate for, you know, on their behalf. So that's how they're getting messed over. And it's usually having to do with their coins. Yeah, because I always think and and there's certain phrases that I know people be overlooking or they may not understand Mm -hmm. it. Cause I know when uh, <laughs> this is my this is as far as my legal uh, knowledge goes. When I didn't have a license, driver's license, mm-hmm. right? And it was something in I was trying to get my um, my driver's license back, and it was certain words that was like will or can or mm-hmm. just those shall li- yes yeah, like those, those little words yeah, mean oh. something totally different oh they carry a lot of weight yeah they carry, like <laughs> yes. that that changes the entire sentence completely yes. and then like i said like you know that people just don't I, I always tell my artists yes are you smart enough to read this contract and understand it yes 
but do you know what should be in there or should not be in there? And that's where it gets a little tricky, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know the words that are that they're saying and the words that are on it. Because you get that a lot. Like, I'm smart enough. I can do my own contract. Sure. But did you know that this should have been in there and it wasn't? They purposely left that out, hoping that you wouldn't know? Mm-hmm. No, you don't. You know, because th- it, you're not looking at those type of contracts on a regular basis. Right. So that's kind of where I step in. And I learned a new word, perpetuity. Perpetuity. <sighs> that's heavy. <Man>. <laughs> <laughs> Perpetuity is heavy, man. It is. Now, can you explain to people what that word actually means? Forever. Forever <laughs> and ever and ever and ever and ever. For your children, your children's children, your children's children. Like, it's, it goes on forever. Yes. So, man. Yeah. Okay. So, take us back. So, when you were working with, um, what is it? You said Red Rum? Red Rum Records. Okay. What were you doing for them? Or who did you... So what happened was I initially started working for Eargasms. Eargasms okay. was a CD store. So this is when we were still doing CDs. Okay. okay. So okay. again, I'm aging myself, <laughs> right? But this is when um, Chameleon and Slim Thug and them used to drive from Houston to mm. um, do, um, what do you call it? I forgot. I, it, it just left me. But consignments. They used to consign, you know, do consignments with the store. Mm. So they would go to each store. Like, that's how it was back in the day, right? And they would just drive Texas and go to each store and do a consignment with each store and then sell the, the CDs from there, right? Mm. So this is when they was coming in person to drop off CDs. Right. Um, and, and uh, awesome yeah, right listen, yeah. like these <laughs> cats didn't have it as easy as these, you know, mm. these new, these new age artists. So this is like that. And um, so I was, th- I was working there as a manager and the, the cat that owned Eargasms worked with Red Rum Records. So they brought me into Red Rum as well. And then they were throwing parties and I just saw a different side of the industry that I had no clue about. Mm. Um, and so I fell in love with that, you know, and I was like, well, I can't. I can't rap, I can't sing, you know? Um, and then that's what I'm saying. That's the importance of that entertainment. And I wish I knew his name. I don't know his name. I don't even remember what he looked like. But when he came, he was like, I'm an entertainment attorney. I was like, what? Ah, so I can <laughs> I can still be in the industry, right? Yeah. And then do my attorney thing. And so that's how that happened. Wow. Okay. <laughs> how long do how long was you at um Eargasm or how long did you work with Red Room? That was during my undergrad year, so maybe maybe three years really? maybe four somewhere around there mm. mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and who was that do, do you remember like what artist was on that label at that time or that was a part of red rum so at, at that time it was like um i know uh do you know not so google was part of the the crew so google james shepherd eleni was all part of the crew um but then there was um, one of these. Are, I forgot, man. I okay, don't remember. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, don't hey, I don't know. You done put me on the spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay. Man, I always, I always thought like entertainment attorneys, some of them was, how do I call it? Mm. Where they were a part of the, the system mm-hmm. into – because the only way att- attorneys make money is if they ne- either negotiate a deal for you or if you're coming to them and say, hey, can you look over this deal, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, I always thought it was like important to go outside of outside of what they what they normally would do. Like, like let's say if you're just an attorney, right? Uh-huh. I would want to come to somebody who is a criminal attorney to look at a contract. Ooh, don't you ever, <laughs> don't you ever do that because criminal attorneys have no clue what they're doing. That's not, it's not the same thing. Mm. Criminal attorneys are negotiating uh, your jail sentence, are negotiating your criminal charges, right? Mm. They have no clue what events you should be having. They have no clue what royalties are. They have, that's not what they do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You go to an entertainment attorney. So usually what happens is the record labels will have their in-house entertainment attorneys for their end. Mm -hmm. You get your own independent entertainment attorney, somebody like me. I'm working on your behalf. I ain't got, Universal ain't paying me a dime. You understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. I'm working on and making sure that you're getting paid and you're getting the money that you're owed on your end. But do not go to family law attorneys. Do not please, please, Lord. Don't do where, it. Where do, you, where do people find entertainment attorneys? Because I know, like, family law attorneys, criminal attorneys, there are a bunch of a them. A bunch of them. But where do you go to – where would somebody even go to look you up? 
Google. Just <laughs> so Google? So Google Entertainment Attorney, or you can come to me directly, of course, right? Um, but, yeah, I mean, your first bet is Google and word of mouth. Just ask. Ask around, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you don't, if you don't, if nobody knows, go on Facebook. Search Entertainment Attorney. Go on Instagram. Search Entertainment Attorney. We're going to pop up. Really? Is that yeah. easy? I mean, it's it's not as hard as we make it, but you're right. It's, we're not out there like family. It's not a lot of us, like family law and criminal law. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot of us, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, and you, you're based here in, in Dallas. It, yes. Okay. Leave, give your information in the middle of the other of the interview so sure. people can get that <laughs> sure so again brie bethencourt owner of the bethencourt law firm my number is one eight three three four the number four brie b-r-i law so that's one eight three three four brie law you can find me on facebook at the bethencourt law firm or on instagram at issa i-s-s-a underscore lawyer and then just hit me up let me know what you need and we'll take you from there cool and how does how does how does the 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 negotiation part works does does a record label send you the contract and then you working on behalf of them or are y'all sending a contract over to universal and say hey this is what we want so what is it normally in that particular um scenario when you're dealing with the major labels they're usually sending you a contract on their end and then we uh, review it with our client i'm gonna explain what it is to you see what it is that you want and then start the negotiation process with them back and forth is the first is uni- is the universal are these big labels are they contracts as really as bad as people saying like it depends on who you are and what you want it really just depends some of them i haven't seen absolutely terrible ones no um but i know that they're out there they just haven't crossed my desk have you have you seen a bad boy contract no okay <laughs> <laughs> i have not <laughs> I always hear Diddy, and I was, now, I've Diddy been having the worst contracts. Listen, out I there. heard, I heard something, I heard some, some, um, some rumors about Mace and Diddy having some issues, but then Mace's Mace's artist coming and be like, "But yo, yours is raggedy too." <laughs> I, hey, I, I haven't looked into all of that, but yeah, I've heard some murmurings. Yeah, what's the um the biggest contract that you negotiated? Can you give us those numbers? No. <laughs> 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 no, but I have, like I said, I'm not new to negotiating with the majors at all. Okay. So that's just part of what I do. You okay. know? So, yeah. Man, where, and I got so many questions in my head that I'm just like, <laughs> just get one out. Um, And so, do, will it be easier for, um, I don't know, I think I already asked that. But I, I, I just, I'm just so in, in, in fast, infatuated with, this this business side of the entertainment game yeah. that I don't even know where to even begin because I know when I talk to a lot of artists and I interview a lot of artists, yeah. it's always like I don't want to get messed over, I don't want to yeah. get screwed by the, the by the big labels, or I don't want to sell my soul yeah. to the to the. But my thing is the only way you learn the business is you got to kind of get not messed over, but that first contract is always going to be in the favor of the person who is putting the contract in front of you the first second third fourth and all the contracts when you draft the contract you're not drafting in, in favor for the other person you're going to draft it in favor for you always so it's not even about yeah learn the basics but build a team you don't have to do it all you don't have to learn it all build a t- like you can't there's no way that you can know everything you can't know how to produce and how to perform and how to right. do contracts <laughs> so then that's why you have people on your team that you trust that works in your favor you know like that's what i always tell my artists like um yeah no so when i come to you and i say hey royalties you know like hey what you know so just know certain basic things but build a team and it's okay to pay people because i guarantee you what you're going to pay me up front is way less than what you stand to lose on the back end so when you look at it like that, you know, like people, even with regular businesses, they have CPAs, they have a legal team, they have somebody who answers the phone. They have, you can't do it all. The same thing with the game, with the, with the, um, with this industry. 
Mm, okay. Do you mostly work with just uh, like music artists or is it like comedians, actors or? Yeah. So I don't do much film and TV. Um, okay. They come, but I don't do much. So it's more music. Okay. Um, a little bit, a couple of literary people, you know, authors and stuff like that. But yes, comedians, models, managers, labels, DJs, things of that nature. I work with a lot of different people. Okay. Man, I always, <laughs> I, I, I'm just so, because the business side is the major part of the inter- yeah. entertainment. And people always, I know, I always hear music business and nobody want to give up they, their rights to the music. Right. But I think you, you got to give up something in order to get in business. You got to give up something, but there's ways to that. There's a trick to the game, right? And so it just, again, every situation is different every artist that comes comes from a different background or their needs are different at that particular time Mm -hmm. so it just depends right and so yeah there's ways to negotiate these things there's you can negotiate everything is negotiable y'all everything is negotiable yeah but if i if i want to keep some of my rights or i want to keep some of the the ownership to the music Mm -hmm. do i have to give up the ownership or Ah, so that's something that you have to come to me and we'll have to discuss. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got to pay a, a fee for that kind of information. You know? Okay. Um, on the, um, I guess I want to ask you, I know you said you don't do like any criminal stuff, right? Right. I did though. When I started, I did everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's your opinion or what's your take on what's going on in Atlanta with these, uh, these RICO cases? This, and uh, Do you think that the, the attorneys or the DA and all them are just targeting people? I'm going to be 100% honest with you and tell you that I have not followed up. Like, I have not been keeping my thumb on those stories at all. Do I think that they're targeting people? They're probably trying to crack down on some things. You know what I'm saying? But are they targeting? I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. I don't know what they were doing. I I have no (laughs) clue. I have not. I've been out of touch. Okay. (laughs) I have. I have. Okay. All right. Do you have a like a love or a passion for music at all? Or I do. Really? I do. And it gets to the point where my clients trust me and they consider me as part of the team. So sometimes, a lot of times, I'll start, I'll hear music before it drops. And I look like, I love that. I love mm. it. Or like if they ask me my opinion, I think that's dope. You know, like you're asking me, an attorney, what I think, you know, but because I truly, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of my clients, right? Mm. So it's not like you just go on to somebody just because they're an attorney, just because, you know. No, I actually listen to it. Like, that's my type of music, right? So What, what type? What, what's, what's the genre? Is it R&B? Is it rap? All Is, is it, it R&B, rap, trap? Really? <laughs> it's all of it. Like, I like it all. I know, right? Like, it, <laughs> you're like, what? Yeah. No, listen, the things that I bump on the way to court when I was going to court regularly, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, you'll be like, <laughs> That's the lawyer? Yes. That's the lawyer, hey. Because <laughs> <laughs> most, most attorneys that I've seen have all been kind of just stiff and tight. and they Absolutely. Just, I'm like. Absolutely. Man. You, you, right, and they don't have no personality, and, and I think that's what sets me apart, and that's what makes me different. My thing is to, to take me off that pedestal, take me off that high horse. I'm a person just like anybody else. I just happen to have a law degree, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, you know, uh, yes, it's not, you know, it's something that I worked hard for and it's something that's not easily obtainable, right? Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I'm going, I'm a high personality. I'm not so stuffy and, and um, that's just part of my charm. Yeah, man. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Do you, um, do you, you, when you say you draft contracts, do you get them from a certain place or do you draft them just from scratch? I draft them. It depends. So um, most of the time I'm drafting them from scratch because every, Every situation is different. So there's not like just a whole hum template that you could just get off the internet. No, I'm, I'm drafting okay. them. And if they're, if I'm receiving them to review and advise and I'm negotiating them, then, you know, I just work off of what I've received. Mm, okay. So it just depends on what my client needs for that particular project. Okay. Is there a particular label that has better contracts initially than other labels or pretty much all of them are they're pretty much standard. The same, the standard industry contracts? Mm, yeah. Okay. What about like endorsements and and, and sponsorships? Um, I don't do much of those. Most of my clients that are coming to me are just like producer agreements, record label agreements, you know, stuff like that, or business because I do business law as well. Um, so a lot of business contracts. I don't do a lot of endorsements and sponsorships. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Do people there, do your clients be calling you like one o'clock in the morning? They be better like, not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> listen, I got a life too. You know what I'm saying? And I got a kid and, and I got to sleep. Yeah. And I guarantee you ain't no label up at no one o'clock. And don't do that. And weekends, you know, just don't. <laughs> the, the best thing I could tell my clients is usually. So what happens is they'll get these, they'll get these agreements like two weeks prior to them actually calling me. Mm. And then they want me to hurry up and get it done in the next day. But it's like a 30 to 50 page. No, I, that's not going to happen. Right. Mm. So I just I always tell my clients, hey, just let them know. I um, I just got an attorney. Please give my attorney. They understand. They know the game. They know what it is. And they'll give you a little bit extra time. I always tell my clients. So that's a little little uh, free game right there. Just tell them you just got an attorney and they'll give you some extra time to get a review. To, to review mm -hmm. it. Mm, OK. I don't know, man. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I like it. I like it. You because like it? I do. Because that's the, the, the most important part of this whole game. Because yeah. the, the artist is already creating. You know what I mean? They already got that part down right. packed. But then, you know, in order for you to have longevity. There or, you go. You know what I mean? And still Perpetuity. be able to, Yes. Then you got to. Yes. <laughs> That's then the yeah, you gotta day. you gotta secure that business end. That business end is everything. That business end is what determines how much money goes in your pocket and how much money does it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the most important part out of all of it. Because I mean, yeah, you're doing it for the love of it, but at some point you're trying to capitalize on it, right? And so this is the part that determines how much you capitalize on it. Mm. So, you know, like I said, just build a team, get an attorney, whether it's me or whether it's somebody else. Of course, I would love for you to come to me, but like wh whoever it is, just make sure it's somebody that you feel like you can trust and that you can go to and make sure that it's somebody that, you know, um, that you can relate to, you know? Yeah. That's what I would want on my team. Yeah. What about if it's like a young new artist that's, mm -hmm. you know, on the come up, mm -hmm. they may not have a whole bunch of money mm -hmm. for an entertainment attorney, but... They're getting a lot of, would you take on a client like that? Or what do you advise in that scenario? Get you a job. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I mean, this is my job too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is how I pay my bills and I feed my kids. So, mm -hmm. um, although I love it, like, this is real for me too. This is, I keep the lights on with this, you know? So, um, you know, I ain't, I, ain't, <laughs> I ain't taking too many pro bono. So, I would say get a job, you know, um, find somebody that's willing to, um, you know, put money into your cause, right? That's willing to um, put money behind you, whether that's your manager, whether that's family members, just somebody. That initial consultation isn't a lot. You can get a lot from a consultation, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's affordable. So just start there and then just build and, and, and get an attorney that, that says, okay, now, young cat, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, this is how much this is gonna cost to do this so that you can start just building building and stacking your paper you know what i'm saying yeah. but like all of this costs y'all like that's another thing like a lot of people think like oh can you do me a solid but if i'm having um if i'm having 10 people a week coming to me asking me for solids you know what i'm saying like now nah, this is part of how i eat yeah. so this is a real job for me it's not a hobby and, and people fail to realize that yeah yeah and i i I know $150, $200 for a consultation, like the information that you will get, mm -hmm. or at least that's an investment into you, right. to them, to, the, to themselves right. to go get the information and then build a relationship right. with, build a relationship with the attorney. So that way, when you do get that big deal, you already know who you can go there to. You, go. you know what I mean? There you go. So invest that. Yeah, absolutely. And some of the stuff like, you know, that record label uh, agreement is um, most of the time those are percentages anyway. So that's not something you're coming out of off top. Um, what what you do know, you mean by that? Like the attorney will take a percentage of whatever, you know, that deal is for, you know, oh, okay. on some of those. So some of those things, but most of the other things you have to come off you know you have to come out your pocket for but just you know just giving you a little tidbit yeah you're right that's an investment to yourself you can write it off legal services mm. are write off mm. for your business so okay. you can write that off that consultation fee and whatever else you paid right mm -hmm. um and so you know just think of it like that yeah do you do um do you like you do business uh formations for artists i do mm. yeah and i do business formations for small businesses medium large business like I do business uh, law as well. So I do trademarks, business law, and entertainment law. 
Really? Yeah. So I do. Um, Bri, I'm coming to you. Okay, cool. I, I'm coming to you because I got. So, yeah, I got some things in mind that okay. I want to at least formate the my business under. So, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely coming to you. Definitely. I'm going to tell you the last. I mean, you can, you can either give me a look or you <laughs> say, we ain't that expensive. Or, okay. Because right. my first business that I, I formated, the dude oh, formated. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Whatever. Okay, formed. Yeah, formed. Mm-hmm. Dude cost charged me fifteen hundred dollars mm-hmm. to to form it. Mm-hmm. To form it. To form it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm assuming he that came, you know, generally it comes with like a consultation, right? So it was a consultation. Um and then he gave me this big old established book. He gave me a stamp, all my documents. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah, that that's about right. Okay. I was like, that seemed like a lot to uh-huh. me. It seemed uh-huh. like a lot. And I was like, Cause when I went to Zoom, uh, Ooh, not legal Zoom, <laughs> legal I Zoom. hate legal Zoom. I don't even know if I should say that. You might want to cut that out. <laughs> Why you don't mm. like legal Zoom? Because I have to fix a lot of contracts that come from legal Zoom. Mm, because okay. legal Zoom is one of those things that are, um, you come in real quick, you you do whatever it is that they ask you to do. It's real basic and real minimal. Mm. And then the contracts are real um, standard. They're not individualized. Mm, okay. And so I've had to fix a lot of those contracts. Mm, okay. So, again, you spend more money on the back end than you would have in the front end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the only um, – and then for some reason, what is the um, – and this is on, on, the, on my business. I had to pay something every year to, to keep it – no, so you have to, unless you're making a million dollars or more in oh. Texas, okay. then you have to um, report once a year to the franchise, f- your franchise, like to the Texas comptroller. Yeah, yeah, So you okay. have to report. So you don't pay anything unless you're making a million, over a million a year. So if you're not making a mil- uh, unless you were late. Now, there's a deadline. So if you were late, then I think it's like a $50 fee to then come in and, and but you shouldn't be paying. Any- is, it, is this formed in the state of Texas? Yes. What is it? Is it the franchise tax? Do you know? It might be. You shouldn't be paying. Are you making a million a year? No. Okay, so you shouldn't be paying anything. <laughs> it should be just that you're reporting once a year. Again, I think the deadline is March or May. It's one of those. I get them confused. If you do it after the deadline, it's a $50 fee, like late fee, because you did it after the now deadline. Now, you know what it is? You know, I'm, I'm sorry. You, I, I remember what it was. It was... I have a website, right? And uh-huh. I was having, I was selling uh, my hoodies on the website. Okay. And then, so every three months, they will send me uh, uh, something from the comptroller asking me how much money I made from my, my website and all this other stuff. Every three months? It was something like that. Okay. And Coming th- from the comptroller? Yes. Oh, okay. And then I recently, um, call was like, hey, man, like, <laughs> I ain't making no more money from right, there. Like, and right. then she was like. No, you can you can set it up where it only comes once a year yeah. versus the three Every months. Every three months, yeah. I was like, yeah, because I didn't I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Okay, and, you know what I mean. It was trying to just trying to just build the business yeah. up and just set it up. But I'm like, this is, seems excessive. I don't know what I'm. I don't know if, if they asked me, and I always had to. I remember. Every time I uh, sent some back or they sent mm-hmm. me some, I always had to send a check with it. Yeah, it was like a tax or something that they wanted. From from my website, yeah, I don't know nothing about that. You should uh, it should only be once a year. And again, if you're reporting less than a million dollars in, in sales, then you shouldn't be paying anything. I gotta get that money back. Listen, you might want to call them because I don't even know what that's about. <laughs> that may have to be part of our our thing when we talk because I don't know what that's about. Man, <laughs> talking about you gotta write a check every three months. What? Yes. For what? And and you said you wasn't making a million dollars in sales no. and duties? I don't know what that's about. Unless they were just, unless that was just like your quarterly taxes. Taxes are quarterly, and that comes from the IRS. Okay. So that's. So, but I don't know why they would. I don't. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. We I, would have to talk about yeah, that. Yeah. We'll, yeah. I'm definitely coming to you because I definitely have some other um, businesses that I, I need to get um, formatted. Mm hmm. Why I keep saying formatted? Is that okay, is, formed? Formed. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Formed. I like it. Formatted. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. What else, man? What else? Anything? I, I know you can't talk about nothing that you 
currently working on that I'm, that or that I've worked on in the past. You can't? No. Can't. Okay. I like to keep my clients, you know, so they don't they don't have to worry about me telling their business. So yeah, I, yeah, I, no. I respect that. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. But other what? than that, I mean, <laughs> I've been so I do speaking as well. Okay. Okay. So I do speaking as well. So I've been uh next week I'm going to San Antonio. Okay. To speak at their Latina conference. Isn't that cute? Latina. Latina. Oh, so it's for okay. like female Latin females that are in the legal field. Okay. Um and so I think this is like their first or second. It's like super Latina. super brand Latina. Isn't I thought yeah, that was I like so the, clever. Yeah, I like the name. Um so I'm speaking on um just running a law firm in this day and age uh, with social media and and what that looks like and um just being a female in a, in the game because i told you like being like it's not a lot of females in here and this is a white male dominated industry mm -hmm. so um it looked a little different for us you know what i'm saying yeah um and so i'll be speaking on that so i'm very excited about that and that's mm -hmm. at my old law school that's the okay. law school i graduated from okay so yeah yeah would you um encourage more women to getting into uh being an attorney or in the, the the law industry i guess so what i would say is if this is where your heart is absolutely because it's not cheap that schooling is not cheap the the it's not easy um being out here on the other side outside of school is not easy especially if you're going to hang up your own shingle that's what we call it when you start your own business your own law firm it's called mm -hmm. hanging up your own shingle so if you're going to do that um and you that's what you want um, even if you don't want to start your own firm, but you want to just be an attorney in corporate America, whatever the case may be, um, just make sure that this is where your heart is at because this ain't a cakewalk it's at real all. On that yeah, side. it's real on this side. Schooling was hard, um, and then you know all those loans that I had to get to go to law school was was real. Mm, so okay, you know, just make sure. Have you ever you worked do. for a firm or no? You, really? Mm -mm. I just can't. Well, just <laughs> jumped out there. I mean, it works. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I know. It's crazy. Like, looking back, I'm like, Ooh, like, that's a little cringy, you know? Yeah. But no, I just, yeah, I was work. So I was working in corporate America, right? Mm -hmm. I was working for a Fortune 500 company in their contract department. I got licensed as an attorney mm -hmm. while I was working there. And I thought, and they had an opening position for the attorney that looked over my department, right? So mm -hmm. to me, that's a no brainer. I've been here for three years. I'm pretty much almost uh in my eyes running the the department for texas so it may i mean right no brainer i'm going to now be the attorney like duh they said no i said oh <laughs> so yeah. i bounced i was like yeah nah y'all ain't gonna do me like that i want to be an attorney i'm not gonna keep doing this you know what i'm saying so um so i just started my own firm because they refused and, and yeah I decided that I wasn't going to allow anybody else to dictate my future. You know what I'm saying? So I just went ahead and, but mind you, I had a one and a half year old. She was one and a half at the time, mm. you know, and I was by myself. I had just bought a house. So it was real out here in these streets, yeah. but I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't mm. because I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I, if I slow rolled myself, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I jumped out there. Mm. I just That's did dope. it. That's I mean, super dope. It's scary, it's scary though. It's scary though. It's scary. But <laughs> On the other side of it is is yeah. it yeah. paid off? Yeah, 100%. it paid off a hundred percent, absolutely. And I would do it again. Really, I would absolutely. There's nothing I would change because it's when your back is against the wall, right? Like that's when you realize what you're made of. Mm. Like that's when it ain't no ain't no plan B. I didn't have a plan B. It was plan A all day, and I had to make plan A work by hook or by crook. It was gonna happen, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a baby to feed, so. Hey, like, but I didn't know anybody else that did it, so it was one of those that I was just like, okay, well, yeah. let me pray about it and go, you know. But I know my family members are like, what, is, <laughs> what is she doing? Yeah. <laughs> what, what is you doing? And I was like, I don't know, you know. <laughs> but, but it worked. How did you gain those clients that, like that first year? That's what. Remember when I told you I was doing criminal and doing all that? I was on those wheels, those court appointment attorneys. Mm. That was your girl. Mm. I was doing court appointment for criminal and court appointment for CPS. And mm. so, um, yeah, I made good money though. It was a lot of it was a lot of cases and a lot. I was running from the time I dropped off to daycare in the morning to the time I picked her up. I was in different counties doing hustling and really? being attorneys. You know, being a uh, court appointed attorney in different counties. So I would go to court here in the morning. Then I got court here and da, da, da. so all day I was in court um, picking up 
you know, McDonald's on the way in between driving mm-hmm. to the next hearing. Um, so when I was bumping my trap, that's when <laughs> that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was doing. But um, I mean, I had to do what I had to do. People talk bad about court appointed attorneys. They do. You've heard them. I have. They talk bad about court. A lot of those court appointed attorneys were amazing. Also had their own firms and had private attorneys, but was doing court appointment for whatever reason. Right. Um, they were dope. A lot of those attorneys you couldn't afford on your own. You couldn't afford on your own, but then they would do the court appointment and you would still get that same type of service. They would mentor me. They were they were awesome attorneys, man. Really? And people always like, oh, they think like it's the bottom of the barrel. No, some of these dope attorneys that if you had the money, you would Google and look up and pay private money to mm-hmm. were also doing court appointments. Yeah. The reason why I think people say that is because, like you said, they got a uh, caseload is is big. Yeah. So they don't have enough time to really sit down and give you that attention mm-hmm. that you would want from attorney that you're paying. You know what I mean? Right. But but at the same time, a lot of the attorneys, the ones that I'm talking about, the okay. ones that I ran a- across, gave you that top notch service where you was pe- paying privately or or you was court appointed. Mm. They gave you that top notch service regardless, right? And they put their their they put their all now. Of course, there's a caseload, right? Mm. Um, but I mean, we deal with caseloads now anyway, privately, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, fortunately, the county I was in, it wasn't, from my experience, it wasn't that bad, you know, where they were just overloading us with cases. We had enough attorneys on the wheel. But, I mean, I would be like, yo, like, she's dope. Like, that's your attorney? She's dope. Like, she knows the game, and you couldn't afford to know. You, better, you know, like, count your blessings on that, you know? How, do, how does the general public find out if the attorney is good or not? How do you know? I guess it's just, I mean, you don't. It's just a, we know because I know how they work, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But the general public, they don't. And because they've heard all these things about court-appointed attorneys and they kind of, you know, they kind of, like, give them shade and stuff, you know. Um, but I, I say if the attorney's answering your phone calls, answering your questions, if they're, if they're showing that they care, if they show up to court, if they just show up to court at the time that you're supposed to be there and you see them in front of that judge and they y'all discussed the, the strategy and they 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 hitting it, whether they win or lose, but they hitting it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's that's the makers of a good attorney. Mm-hmm. It's the ones that ain't answering your phone call. They don't show up to court like it's a court date and you up there by yourself and they got to reset it because the attorney didn't show up. That's when you got a clue like. Maybe this ain't, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. if they're like going hard for you and they're and they know your case and they and they're sitting there talking to you about negotiation strategies and tactics, I mean that's that's what it is. Mm, okay. Uh, Not for those that have court appointed yeah. attorney. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've I've uh I've gotten off those wheels because I I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And criminal criminal law just wasn't it. Yeah. So and family law wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? Because family law is a whole nother. Listen, listen. I've been through all those courts. Uh, <laughs> all of them. Listen, family law is no joke. As, as like as an attorney on this side, the things that you see and hear, um, is wild. Yeah, it's wild. So <laughs> yeah. like that's not my thing either. So I wanted to do what I wanted to do. So yeah. that's why I got off. But man, there's still some dope attorneys on that wheel. Yeah. What's your background? Where, where are you? Where are you? I, I feel like you, you hear even, something. I do. <laughs> I do. I hear some kind of island something. Oh, okay. See, usually I don't know what people are hearing, so I just throw it all out there. So I was born in New York. Okay. And um, so every now and again, that'll push through. Okay. And then my family is Panamanian. My mom and dad are from Panama. The, really? The country, not Panama City, Florida. I have to make that distinction, right? Because people be like, who Florida? The, no, no, no. No, no, no. You don't understand. Who, who be like Florida? <laughs> Florida? I be like, my people are from Panama. Florida? <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, sir, no, the country, really? no, yeah. I'm be like the Panama Canal, you know the Panama. So yeah, that's where my people are from. Mm, Panama, okay. yeah. I got a homegirl that is uh, Panamanian. Oh so, yeah. yeah. See, we make it. Listen, yeah. we out here. Yeah. Like people don't know. People are like what? Like they've never, you know. But now, I remember growing up. Oh, have you always been from Texas? No. Where, where'd you come from? From L.A., from California. Okay. you. Oh, yeah. I did a little stint in L.A. Really? We'll talk about that. In a okay. <laughs> okay. I did a little 10 months in L.A. <laughs> I came right on back to Texas. <laughs> but um, I remember growing up in Texas back back then, right? Black Hispanic wasn't a thing. 
like that well it was just mexican black white asian that's it, that's it. Mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so then here i come from new york uh-huh. you know and i got this accent and my family is talking spanish and so it was hard back in the day so i'm so happy now that cardi b is out here showing you know what i'm saying um and, and so many other artists are out here just showing that we exist and people are just more accepting yeah. and then that you say that there's you know i know a panamanian i remember when that wasn't a thing they'd be like what yeah. florida yeah. <laughs> florida <laughs> like no yeah. <laughs> so los angeles yeah what brought you here i know this ain't my show i'm sorry no it's fine oh. um <laughs> so i i went to uh i went to prairie view that's nice. the yeah, okay I went to prairie view so that started me my texas roots uh-huh right? um and then I moved back after college, went back to L.A., uh-huh. and while I was here, I met this uh, girl. Her name yeah. was LaKenya. Uh-huh. She later became my wife, Aww. and so I just moved back, and oh, I was so. like, you know what? Fuck it. I, and I was I started to hate California just just from What was with, it? What was it? First of all, the, the, the cost of living. Oh, yeah. The cost of living was yeah. just ridiculous. Ridiculous, yeah. And... I had started getting into like so many little little trouble things okay. with the court system, and okay. I was like, "Fuck this!" Oh, excuse me. I was like, "Man, I'm out of here." I'm like, "I'm like I, I'm leaving California." Yeah. And so six years ago, I left. Um, and now it's crazy to see that most California people are mo- moving to Texas. Yeah, they here. Yeah. <laughs> I did ten months in. I'm saying it like I was in right jail. Like. I, I did ten <laughs> months in Inglewood, right? Yeah. Okay, wasn't bad. Ingo, I love Inglewood. I thought Inglewood was dope. You know, did you? I did. It, 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 when, it didn't bother me. When did you do? That's probably the part. <laughs> so I did Inglewood after law school because I was gonna go to California and be an entertainment attorney. And that what, was, what year? So is that this? was like two, that was 2011. Okay. So okay. I, I, I think I was still I was still out there then. Okay. Yeah. So that's 2011 ish. I didn't have no problems in Inglewood. You know, um, and um, but. The struggle was real. Like I, I was roommating with somebody and trying to get my own apartment, and even trying to get a job as a as a paralegal and as a, while I took the bar out there. And then the bar was a whole nother. Anyway, so um, I decided that I, I said I didn't came all the way out here to California to struggle. I ain't never struggled a day in my life. I was struggling out there like financially, right? Mm-hmm. And I wasn't used to to that because you know you know it's, it's cheaper here in texas right and so i was like i'm out here struggling for no for no reason it took me 10 months i said no nah, venice beach can't because i love venice i love venice beach do right you? i do it's so like <laughs> when you ain't got no money like that's so and you want to just get out the house like that's where you go right for entertainment yeah, right yeah. so I, and then it's just beautiful it's just it's beautiful yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. so i packed up my little my little bmw uh-huh. and sh- Hooked it right on back to tech. I said, nah, I'm, this is foolish. I'm, I ain't never struggled a day in my life. I done came out of the way out here to struggle. And then I couldn't pass the bar. I kept falling 25 points short. Mm. California is inundated with attorneys. So the bar's mission is to keep you out, not necessarily help you in. They mm. trying to, so they're, 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 um, their grading systems are a lot more stringent in mm. California. So 25 points every single time. Like I took it like two, three times. Mm. I was like, you know what? You know what? This is a sign. I'm finna go on back to Texas, and I came on back to Texas. I don't finna do that. And it, but cost, I loved it, it. it cost to take the bar, right? It, it cost to take the bar. Yeah, it cost to take the bar, and then it's. I think Cali was like two days of bar exam. I think I can't remember. Texas is three whole full days, eight hours each day of just, and and Testing? it's. A t- the entire time there's like not no there's not any like people think like it's just like oh you write this thing and then you stop no Jesus. the entire time three days yeah, yeah. like uh, like it's gruesome and so uh you yeah, know i said i haven't been back to la since i said i want to go back just to visit though i'm on a visiting <laughs> yeah you want to go visiting. visit it, yeah and i'm gonna get back <laughs> on the plane and go home right but i haven't been back since then but L.A. Gate, man, it was a good time, those 10 months. And it's beautiful out there. It is. The weather is nice. Is The oh, people, though. The people. Oh, the people was See, getting me, man. What do you mean? I ain't, Listen, you. What do you mean the people? <laughs> what <you> Okay. Mean? <laughs> I don't want to get no problem. I don't want no problem. I don't want no smoke. No. Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> so, originally, I'm from New York, Brooklyn, New York. Mm-hmm. And I remember feeling like, I was like, okay, at least in Brooklyn. They don't like you. They're going to tell you, I don't like you. 
So you know what to expect. You know to brace yourself. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're going to be like, I, I ain't fooling with you like that. Yeah, and yeah. it's just raw and uncut. What I found in L.A. is that they would not like you. But you can't tell because they're smiling. They're friendly. They're, it was a lot of uh, fakery. Yeah. And then they kick you down the stairs. So you don't even know to brace yourself for that kick, right? <laughs> At least New York, you know to brace yourself, right? Like yeah, it's coming. Yeah. They would sneak up on you and kick you down the stairs. And I was like... Listen, I'd rather somebody be real with me than uh, I couldn't do the fake. It was the fakeness for me. And it was like, you know, um, as soon as I pull up, these females judging what I get out of. They judging what I got on, my jewelry, my clothes, my shoes, my purse, my makeup, everything. And I was like, <laughs> like, I can't, like that was a lot for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, no, I'm going to go back to Texas. Yeah. I ain't got to deal with all this. <laughs> and so that's, I, I just... It was the personality. I just wasn't vibing with it. Yeah. And I think mo most, in my opinion, of New York people is most New York people are in your face. Up front like, You know face, what I mean? Yeah. With L.A., it is kind of like hunky little Dory mm -hmm. and everybody is, but yeah. Nice and stuff. And they don't yeah. like you. Like, they hate your guts. But it, I think that's, that, be, that comes from a sense of we don't know what you may do later. Mm -hmm. And so we want to. Put that on that face or be, you know what yeah, I mean? No, nah, I'm good. We don't know that. who you gonna be. Mm -mm. Right, that, right. That's what it is. <laughs> we don't know who you. We don't want to burn our bridges. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, nah, I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm so straight on that. So I was like, Mom, I'm coming back home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it took me ten months. I tried though. I would, and then like the one bedrooms, it'd be like a. A, a room this like an apartment this size so and it listen, was like $1,600. No, let's not talk about <laughs> rooms because New York rooms to L.A. rooms. That's why I didn't go to New York because <laughs> I wasn't finna do New York either. New York was, t they want to put you in the basement for yeah. six, at least, at least this room would have had a view, right? Yeah. <laughs> in L.A., they would put you in the basement for like $2,000. you would be like, no, wait a minute. Yeah. We're rats and roaches. Uh-uh, I can't. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's why I didn't go. So that's why you should have went to like the Valley. The Valley is... I wanted to. The Valley was expensive for me at that was point. Was it? At that time, it was. Like, the mm. Valley was charging what Texas is now charging for things, for apartments. Really? You know what I'm saying? At that time, the Valley was... It was too much. I stayed in my little Inglewood area. Listen, yeah. there was a fish spot <laughs> down the street I loved. Where, where did you Listen, stay at? Where, do you I remember? don't remember what the street was, but it was um, it was quiet. It was okay. That street that street was quiet. Okay. We didn't have no problems. Okay. I didn't. I didn't... Here for anything, yeah. <laughs> you know, because you hear stories, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, that she was like super chill. Um, Inglewood looks so different now, does it? Because they built that good uh, or bad, good. Okay, because they built that stadium, that stadium right there. But yeah. the stadium was there when I was there in 2011. I want to say the stadium was there. Yeah, I think the stadium they just started building it. Um, matter of fact, when I left. When 2016, 17. Really? Yeah, they only played football in the two state two years, I think. Right. Oh, so okay. you you remember what a uh, Hollywood Park Casino was in Inglewood, like right off of um, I think so Manchester and Prairie. Mm -hmm. So that whole um, Inglewood, I mean uh, Hollywood Park, where it was the racetrack. Okay. Is no longer there. That whole thing is now the football. The football stadium. stadium. Okay, so yeah, now maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but so, so it looks like so it's nice now. Yes. Nicer. Nicer. Yeah. That's dope. It yeah. wasn't bad when I was there in 2011. I didn't think it was like compared to what I saw on TV and what I was expecting. So this yeah. how this how LA is. Like a street could be bad, and then you can move over to the next street, and it'd be all old right people. Right over. Right yes. next over. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And it'd be all old people that stay okay. on the street, you know what I mean? And so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what, it was a lot of older. It wasn't, I didn't see a lot of kids or people my age out there at all on yeah, that street. Yeah, So maybe that's what it was. I was like, oh, this is, I can do this. <laughs> it gave me a false sense, I guess. I was like, yeah. I can do this, Inglewood. It ain't bad. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I, I wish you knew where, where you stayed at. I, when I when we get off, I'll tell you when we get off. I, okay. I'll see if I can find it. Okay. For yeah. sure. <laughs> I, sometimes I miss home, but sometimes I'm like, it's not worth it to even pay for the weather. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like the, the the state of California not doing anything to, to help the, the residents mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, especially during COVID, I'm so glad I wasn't out really? there for COVID. It was bad. Man, oh. it was like. Desert, and I think New York and 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 California mm -hmm. were the two states that stayed closed down the longest. Mm -hmm. 
So I was like, yeah, there's no way I could have did COVID <laughs> over there. Heck so no. then, are you settling for Texas, or do you really like Texas? No, I, I really like Texas. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. And matter of fact, my my mother's dad is from Fort Worth. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. So I got some families st- in in Fort Worth that okay. are that are here. So that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Okay. Yeah. And then your wife is from here. She's from here. Okay, so yeah. then you're straight. Yeah, I got a little Texas background in me, whether I know it or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, though. That's yeah. true, yeah. So That's dope. I'm loving Texas, man. I'm, I'm loving Texas. I business. always ask people that, like, come here, like, do you like it or do you not like it? Like, you know, because I'm always curious as to, like, your experience, right, coming mm-hmm. from somewhere else, your experience. So, yeah. I, th- I think me going to uh, Prairie View kind of shaped me to the yeah. Texas living, yeah. you know what I mean? So, and I, I met a bunch of people that was from Dallas, from Houston, mm-hmm. you know, from San Antonio, different part of Texas. Mm-hmm. And some of them I went, you know, during those little small breaks. Yeah. I went and visit their, their okay. town. So okay. I kind of got to see a little bit more of Texas during that point. You was know it I mean? a culture shock for you when you went to Prairie View? Um, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Only because it was, it was more... Um, I was used to, I, I went to all black high school, okay. right? So uh-huh. going to all black college wasn't that major. Okay. But just seeing people from with these different clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was, yeah. That kind of threw me off. Like, wait, what? What is what is he wearing? Starchy Archies? Like, Not I never. Starchy Archies. <laughs> no. Yeah. And, yeah. and just hearing the music was mm-hmm. totally different. Mm-hmm. So that part was, but not too much as far as like anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I loved it. That's dope. I remember I, I had a culture shock, but I was smaller. So I was like six when I came here. Mm. And it was a culture shock for me. I think more so because I was a culture shock for them. Like I was shocked that you were shocked by me. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what, y- what is y'all doing out here? Like, yeah. I don't understand, you know? And I'm like, you know, because New York is a melting pot. Everybody, you know, there's so many different people there from mm-hmm. different cultures, right? So you just learn that people are different early on, right. right? Here, it was like, you know, they looking at me sideways. And I'm looking at them like, what? why are you looking at me? You know? Yeah. Um, you ain't never heard of Panamanian? You ain't never heard of, you know? Because to me, that was my world. Like, that's what I knew. I was Panamanian. There was other Panamanians like that, you know? Uh, we talk Spanish. We listen to Spanish music, you know? And so it was, for me, it was a culture shock that I look like you. But yeah. culturally, we yeah. had nothing in common. Mm-hmm. You talking about um, okra. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't, and to this day, I don't eat okra, okay? But I'd be like, I don't know what that is. Like, what? Greens and cabbage? That wasn't part of my, it's yeah. wonderful, okay? Yeah. I love it, right? <laughs> but I didn't know what that was. And they'd be like, how you don't know? And I was like, well, I don't know how you don't know. Like, Y'all eat plantains. Like, huh, right. Love plantains. Yeah. Love them. I remember I remember going to my homegirl house as a kid. And yeah. her mother would have plantains cooked. Yeah. And I'm like, With what every is meal. this? Yeah. Every so, meal. Like, what is this? Banana. Yeah. And you'd be like, banana, right? Because th- you're talking about the yellow. you thinking the yellow banana. Yeah. Listen, them, la- listen. And then have rice with every meal. Mm-hmm. Rice and chicken with every, matter of <laughs> every fact, dinner. Matter of fact, my homegirl that's from Panama, uh-huh. that's Panamanian, she lives here now. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. She that's li- dope. I think she lives in Mansfield. So, yeah. Oh, what's her name? I'll tell you after the show. Okay, I'm like, yeah. give me her name. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll okay. tell you. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I know any Panamanians in Mansfield. Um, but yeah, that's that's dope. Yeah. See, look at that. Yeah, that's what's small up. world. Yeah, <laughs> man, I'm not. I don't want to keep you too long, Bree. I appreciate you um, coming and sharing your knowledge, and I'm definitely gonna come and see you. Um, when I'm ready to form my okay. business, okay, uh, <laughs> man, leave your information in case people want to get a hold of you. Okay, so um, my, again, my name is Bree Bethacourt, owner of the Bethacourt Law Firm. If you need me for legal services, hit me up at one eight three three four B R I Law. That's one eight three three four Bree Law. And then you can also find me on Instagram at Issa Lawyer, Issa I S S A underscore Lawyer or on Facebook at the Bethacourt Law Firm. And then to book me for speaking gigs, um, just DM me at, at, at on Instagram, it's a underscore lawyer, and um, we can go from there. Okay. Man, Bree, thank you again. Thank, thank you, you for tapping in. Yes. Yo, man, this has been the Tap In Podcast. Thank y'all for tapping in. Holla.